I've talked a lot about presence detection on this channel, calling it the biggest game changer in my smart home. I've shown how millimeter wave sensors can accurately detect if a person is in a room, even if they are sitting still. I've also described why this matters. By knowing confidently if anyone is in a room or the house, you can reliably automate routine tasks like turning off lights, changing the thermostat, arming or disarming the alarm system, and much more. But what if you could not only know if someone was in a room, but their exact location in that room? You could know if someone was sitting on the couch for turning on a reading light or at the counter for turning on the overhead lights. In this video, I'm gonna show how that's possible using the MTR-1 multi-target radar from Apollo Automation. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive, so if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. Let's take a closer look at the MTR-1, what it is and what it does. Apollo Automation sent me this device to test out, but they didn't pay me to say anything, nor did they review this before publishing. The MTR-1 is a smart home sensor built for home automations using Home Assistant. Its standout feature is a multi-target millimeter wave radar. This can track up to three targets simultaneously across three zones at a distance up to six meters or 19.6 feet. This ability to track multiple targets in multiple zones is what separates the MTR-1 from a similar sensor by Apollo, the MSR-2 millimeter wave multi-purpose sensor. I'll link to that video if you wanna check it out. Like the MSR-2, the MTR-1 also has a lux and UV sensor for measuring the ambient brightness, plus temperature and pressure sensors. However, unlike the MSR-2, the MTR-1 does not include a humidity sensor. You can also get an optional CO2 sensor though. In addition, the device includes an RGB pixel and a buzzer. These can be used in home automations as both visual and audible notifications. For example, reminding you to move the laundry from the wash to the dryer by displaying a blue light and playing a beeping sound. If you live with others and want to know which person is in the room using the Bluetooth on their phone or smartwatch, you can use the MTR-1's onboard Bluetooth tracker. The MTR-1 must be plugged in to function and uses a USB-C connector. One of the cool things about Apollo Automation sensors is the available accessories that give you more choice and how you mount and place them. The MTR-1 comes in this 3D printed case and a little floor stand on the bottom for placing it on a flat surface like a shelf or table. However, you could pick up a sensor stand which you can mount to any surface at an angle using the included tape or screw holes. Or you could get an outlet mount for plugging directly into a wall outlet. Since millimeter wave sensors are super sensitive to even subtle movements, placement location is key. So these accessories can help you get the setup right. Speaking of setup, adding the MTR-1 to Home Assistant follows the same steps as other sensors from Apollo Automation. And that's a good thing because they are among the fastest, easiest devices I've added to Home Assistant. Plug the sensor into a power brick, connect the device's Wi-Fi network from your phone or computer. A pop-up screen then allows you to select your home's Wi-Fi network for the sensor to connect with. After entering your Wi-Fi password, open up Home Assistant and go to the Devices and Services page. The sensor is auto-discovered by ESP Home and Home Assistant. Click Configure and Submit, and the device is added to the ESP Home integration and ready for use in your home automations. All of this can be done in about a minute. Once set up, you'll see just how many entities are exposed in Home Assistant. The list is especially long because of the unique real-time data and configuration possibilities for that multi-zone radar. By default, the MTR-1 zone type was set to disabled in Home Assistant. This means it is set up to track general presence detection in a room. If you don't want zone tracking and just want general detection, then you can leave it as is. But if you want to track presence across multiple zones within that room, you'll need to configure the zones 
and there are two ways to do this. First, you can enter distance values on the device page in Home Assistant. This requires you to measure how far a desired zone is from the sensor, separate that from the other zones, and enter the values manually. The second and faster method is to use a separate app called the HLK Radar Tool. I didn't love the idea of needing another app for zone configuration. However, it does simplify and expedite zone configuration. Just enable Bluetooth mode on the MTR1 from the device page, and then the HLK tool quickly detects it. From the HLK app, you can drag and resize virtual boxes with your finger to lay out your desired zones one, two, and three. You'll wanna do this when you're in the same room as the MTR1, both for the Bluetooth connection and for positioning the zones. Since it shows a graphical interface of targets in that room, it makes it much easier to know where each zone is in space based on where you are sitting or standing. After saving, this auto fills the data into Home Assistant and your zones are ready to go. As you move about the room, the entities for zones one, two, and three display a real-time count of the number of targets being tracked. You'll be able to track if any target is still or moving within those zones. I even added a visual layout of these movements to my Home Assistant dashboard so I can see at any time without needing to use that HLK Radar Tool app. Separately, and as I mentioned in my review of the MSR2, you'll want to calibrate the CO2 sensor for the most accurate readings. To do that, just take it outside, plug it in for three to five minutes, and then press the Calibrate SCD40 button at the top of the entities on the device page in Home Assistant. After that, it's ready to use inside. All right, so what are some ways that I'm using the sensor and how might you want to use it? Well, in our house, we have an open kitchen and living room as one larger room. The multi-target millimeter wave allows me to know if someone is sitting at the kitchen counter, standing in front of the refrigerator, or relaxing on the living room couch. So I can create an automation to turn on the kitchen lights when someone is at the counter or turn on the living room lamp when someone is on the couch. You could also do things like turn on the TV or play music based on a defined zone. Or set your home into a night mode like turning off all lights and arming the alarm based on a zone around your bed with a time condition. Similar to the MSR2, I use the Lux sensor to only turn on the lights when the room's brightness level is too low. I can also automate turning on a ceiling fan when the temperature sensor or CO2 readings cross certain thresholds. The RGB pixel can turn red if it's nighttime and the garage door has been left open. When you have a device with so many sensors and features, you will most likely only be limited by your imagination. There's a lot to like about the Apollo MTR2 multi-target radar sensor. It packs a ton of useful sensors into a single compact and discrete device. Multi-target millimeter wave opens up new presence detection possibilities, going beyond knowing if someone is in a room to where they physically are in that room. The RGB pixel is a nice bonus. Indicator lights can be really useful in home automation, so I wish more sensors had this. And adding the device to Home Assistant was a breeze. If you were to get stuck, the Apollo automation team is very responsive on their Discord channel and their wiki has lots of helpful documentation. That's not to say the MTR1 is perfect. I'd love for an easier way to configure zones in Home Assistant, similar to the HLK radar tool, but without requiring a separate app. And just like the MSR2, I'd be interested in a version with a PIR motion sensor, which I think is the better sensor for turning lights on and avoiding unwanted detections. Because this sensor is so small and lightweight, I found it difficult, if not impossible, to position it on a flat surface using the included tabletop stand. The USB-C cord, even a flexible braided one, just yanks the device around. Finally, I'd like to see improved still detection. The MSR2 is better than the MTR1 at knowing if someone is sitting still at a desk or on the couch. This is a key aspect for me in presence detection, and I don't want to necessarily combine two millimeter wave sensors in the same room just to get both still and multi-target detection. 
the Apollo MTR-1 multi-target radar is $40, or $5 more than the MSR-2. This extra $5 adds multi-target, multi-zone presence detection, but gives up an extra reliable still detection. For an extra $20, you can get the MTR-1 with the CO2 sensor, just like the MSR-2. And for another $5 to $13, you can get one of the optional accessories for mounting the device. But at $40 for the base price, you get a really compelling smart home sensor. Let me know in the comments if you're using multi-target, multi-zone radar, or how you might use it in your smart home automations. If you're interested in how this MTR-1 stacks up against the MSR-2, you'll want to check out the video here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful, and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Welcome to Zone 1. Enjoy some relaxing music. Welcome to Zone 2. Here is some extra light for curling up with a book. Welcome to Zone 3, the Danger Zone.